This is our understanding the scripture segment. We're in the book of Acts. We're in Acts chapter 21, and we're picking up with verse 8. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came to Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. Should I keep going, Dave, or you want to? Jump on that. Uh, well, go ahead. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that earneth... <laughs> so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, that is girdle meaning belt, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Now, Dave, we promised our audience that, um, and they probably thought we were going to sneak by this one, that we were going to talk about uh, Paul also being approached by an individual who said to Paul through the Spirit, this is verse 4, that he should not go up to Jerusalem. So, Dave, what do you say? Yeah, well, let's uh, get a couple of other things straight here, first of all. We came to Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip, the evangelist, which was one of the seven. So if we go back to chapter 6, uh, it tells us that there were seven. You know, there were... Uh, the same please the whole, verse five the whole multitude. Uh, this is because they were saying it's not. There were some complaints by the Grecians against the Hebrews. Now the Grecians, as I think you pointed out, these, these weren't Greeks living in Jerusalem, but they were uh, they were Jews who were from that area. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they felt that their widows were not getting a fair share, and they complained. And the, the 12, verse 2, called the multitude of the disciples together, and they said, it's not reason or reasonable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. I mean, this is not our job as apostles to divvy up this food. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost, and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. And the saying pleased them and so forth. And they chose Stephen, going to be the first martyr of the church, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus. So we know that, that Philip, he's one of these seven. Two chapters later, we read about him. And I can only assume it would be the same Philip. It's not Philip the apostle, mm -hmm. but this is one of the seven. Uh, and this is chapter 8, verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them, and so forth. So you know what happened. Uh, Simon the sorcerer supposedly got converted and uh, was baptized. And then Peter comes, and he confronts Simon. Uh, then verse 26 the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, and so forth. And he joins himself to the Ethiopian eunuch and leads him to Christ mm -hmm. and, and baptizes him. Right. So he's so, definitely an evangelist. I mean, right. Um, based on that title alone, that's what it must be. So that's the gentleman's house. Now, Philip, therefore, was in Jerusalem in the early days. He probably... Uh, I mean, from the very beginning, he, he must have been. Now, when it says in Acts chapter 2, they had all things common, and those that had uh, houses or land sold them. I think we talked about this yeah, yeah. before just mm -hmm. a bit. But anyway, to get, the, uh, get it all straight, this is not teaching communism. They obviously didn't sell every house they had. They must have had more than one house, those who sold houses. They obviously didn't sell all the land they had. If you were a farmer and you sold all your land, you've got no way of making a living. So they, they kept something that they needed for their own maintenance. 
They didn't give everything away and all become, uh, you know, beggars in the street out there. Uh, we mentioned that the, the prayer meeting for Peter's um, imprisonment, you remember? That was in the home of the mother of John Mark. And she must have had a pretty big house because the whole church was gathered there, or at least many of them, those who attended the prayer meeting. So now we know who this Philip was. He had a house, and uh, it's large enough to accommodate Paul and those who are traveling with him. And um, he had four daughters. Doesn't say anything about sons. Maybe there were some sons, but four daughters who were virgins, and they prophesied. Now, what's another interesting thing, Tom? Um, every prophecy uh, that is mentioned in the Bible is not recorded for us. Uh, for example, if you went to 1 Timothy chapter 4, I think it is. I'm going to look this up quickly. And verse 14. Paul is writing to Timothy, and he says, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery, that is, the elders. So apparently, the elders received a prophecy from God how God would use Timothy as a young man, mm -hmm. and they prophesied over him, but we don't know what it was. Uh, so... To say, well, I mean, there's some people who say this, Tom. I was raised to believe that. Well, every prophecy that God ever gave or everything that was ever uttered uh, under the inspiration of God is in the Bible. Now, I'm going to get some, we'll surely get some letters. Well, here was something that was definitely from God. It was given thee by the prophecy, by, it was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. So there was a prophecy. Mm -hmm. A definite prophecy from God it doesn't say it was a false prophecy, but it is not part of the canon of Scripture because the canon of Scripture has only those prophecies that are intended for all. Uh, there were individual prophecies. If you went back to the Old Testament, remember, um, Moses was taking too much on himself, and God said, "Well, to help with this burden, I will take of the Spirit that is on you." and I will put it upon 70 elders. Now, there was one of these elders that gives his name, and I forget, who didn't show up. Come to the door of the tabernacle, and I'll take the, the spirit that's on you and put it on them. One young man, I guess, didn't show up. <laughs> he forgot. It wasn't in his calendar or something. And somebody comes running and says, you know, I forget his name. <laughs> Maybe, you remember, Tom? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's his name, though? I don't remember. No, I know. No, but don't bother. Okay. Uh, we're, we don't have time for that. And they came, They, I think it was El Hanan or something like that, El something or other, says, he's prophesying in the camp. He's not supposed to do that. He's supposed to come. And Moses says, wait a minute, this is the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, but the point I'm trying to make is, we don't have a record of any of these prophecies, okay? But they came from God, all right? Now, the Bible, these are the prophecies. This is the Word of God to the whole church, to everyone, okay? So we don't know every prophecy that these ladies prophesied. It doesn't say this was the only prophecy they ever gave. Okay, maybe I'm taking too long on that, Tom. Well, Dave, I think some in our audience may be worried here because we're just about out of time and you haven't gotten to the tough uh, question yet. Right. Okay, I'm establishing that these people are real prophets. Okay. And uh, they have prophesied more than one. Agabus comes along, and he prophesies too. Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. Now, we have a choice. Either Paul is being tested by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and God is, you know, seeing well, Paul, will you stick with it? I have told you, you're going to... For more it. information about the Berean Call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website, 